Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp on Nintendo Switch updates one of the best turn-based strategy games of all time with 3D visuals and the addition of online multiplayer. And honestly, while the revamped visuals won't be to everyone's tastes, the gameplay is still absolutely on point. But the basics first. Developer Way Forward is on task for this remake, revamp, reboot, whichever you'd like to call it. A team perhaps best known for its 2D platformer series, Shantae, and the more recent brawler, River City Girls. And from a pure gameplay perspective, in recreating the mechanics of developer intelligent systems to Game Boy Advance classics, WayForward nails the essentials here. The nuts and bolts of the 2001 original and its 2003 follow-up, Advance Wars 2 Black Hole Rising, are faithfully recreated here with plenty of quality of life improvements. It's addictive, challenging stuff. And in that respect, it's a successful Nintendo Switch, a strategy double bill, if you like, remade for a new audience. But is this everything an Advance Wars game could have been on Switch? And above all, how do the new 3D visuals of the remake stack up against the Game Boy Advance originals? Let's find out. Let's track back for just a second. Created by developer Intelligent Systems, Advance Wars released in 2001 to become one of the definitive games for Nintendo's Game Boy Advance. It was, simply put, a perfect use of the hardware. Every button served a function and every pixel on its screen crammed in this gorgeous 2D sprite work. It even had link-up play for local multiplayer. It was a pure and timeless top-down strategy game, an almost chess-like battle where every unit has a counter, where terrain type, weather conditions and map visibility are crucial to victory. Be it on ground, air or sea, units are selected from this bird's eye view. You move each unit across the tiles first and then choose whether to attack, taking you to a more dramatic ground view of the action. Initiative is key, but certain units are better suited for certain conflicts. Tanks have an advantage against infantry, for example, but tanks also have a weakness to artillery, which themselves have a vulnerability to attack choppers. And so on and on it goes. The ultimate aim? The conditions to victory? Well, that's to either wipe out every enemy unit on the map or to claim their headquarters using infantry. For Game Boy Advance users, this was a perfect release. Its fusion of beautiful 2D visuals, robust mechanics, and portability all made it an essential pickup in 2001. But in fairness, this success didn't just come out of nowhere. Intelligent Systems had plenty of time, many iterations to get these mechanics right. The series' origin, of course, goes back to the Japan-only 1988 release of Famicom Wars. More entries followed in the Wars series, again only for the Japan market, with Game Boy Wars in 1991 and two sequels following on Nintendo's handheld. And then Super Famicom Wars also landed in 1998 via its Teleview service with vastly improved sprite quality and mechanics. Still though, to this day, and even with the Wars series branching out to GameCube and Nintendo DS since, it's this Game Boy Advance version that really hit the sweet spot. It was Advance Wars, the first of the series to get a Western release that is most fondly remembered for many. Fast forward 22 years since that first GBA release then, and we have a complete remake for Nintendo Switch in Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. And first impressions are excellent looking at the menus. So much is included right away. Both Game Boy Advance campaign modes come bundled together. You get a complete map editor, plus an in-game shop to buy extra maps, music, and more. We have local multiplayer modes and online multiplayer, and perhaps most eye-catching, at first glance anyway, is a new opening cutscene. Booting the game up, you're greeted by this beautiful opening animation, replacing the sprite-based opener of the original. Every original character design here is realized with flowing 24 frames per second animation, and likewise, cell shaded avatars appear during dialogue, which are now partially voiced, complete with, again, fully animated special moves in battle. Now, these are a real highlight, an authentic take on the series' original artwork, but there's a catch. Sadly, this art style creates an expectation for the reboot's visuals in gameplay, which, alas, just doesn't match up. Before we get to the criticisms, let's talk on the tech fundamentals here. 
Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp is built on the Unity engine, in line with WayForward's other recent projects, and yes, enabling the framerate graph, the performance here certainly lives up to that engine's reputation on Switch. It's not ideal. On the plus side though, I'm glad to say the resolution hits the maximum native 1080p possible on Switch while docked, and we get a native 720p while playing in portable mode. But yes, as for performance, well, a few points here. Firstly, the frame rate is capped to 30fps while in the standard bird's eye view of the battlefield, and that runs with uneven frame pacing. So notice the trilling to the frame time graph on the left side between 16, 33 and 50 milliseconds. All of this means any camera panning while zoomed into the action will appear less fluid than it should. And the second problem, in battle mode, for the cutaways to the action at a ground level, the Unity engine instead switches to an unlocked 60fps. Except, ultimately, it doesn't even hit a locked 60 in battle at all. It's more often a wavering 30 to 50 FPS, especially once the screen shows a split screen of both armies. So the outlook isn't great on the surface, but honestly, to be really frank here, not once did I really mind. Never did this uneven frame pacing get in the way of my actual enjoyment of Advance Wars gameplay. Sure, a locked 60 FPS would have been ideal, obviously, for both map and battle scenes, but it's not as essential as you might expect. This isn't a first person shooter, it's not a fighting game where every millisecond counts. Since most maps fit into view in their entirety without a need to pan the camera, you're often looking at a static frame anyway, and in battle, again, it's a side on view with a static camera. So, in practice you may notice a light judder, some uneven motion while moving units, but all things considered, the frame rate graph here says one thing, but the practical naked eye test says another. Putting frame rates and resolutions aside, there's perhaps a bigger gripe here, that the Game Boy Advance's 2D sprites give way to modern 3D visuals. For perspective, the GBA original ran with a resolution limit of 240 by 160 but intelligent systems took a economical view of what was possible. It made every pixel count, and even blown up to today's 4K TVs, honestly, the 160p output scales pretty well. Switching to the new reboot though, well, the charm of that pixel art is perhaps lost in translation. No doubt, both infantry and tank units, for example, are functionally recreated in Unity. They do the job, but the fact is there was perhaps a chance to do more here. I mean, after seeing the reboot's animated opening cutscene and the cell shaded models, the gameplay itself is something of a letdown. The models, the map, are rendered in a different style, with conventional 3D lighting and shading techniques. So we get a basic specular mapping pass for tank metals, rather than cell shaded materials in line with the character art. Also, there are basic rudimentary circles standing in for shadows underneath each unit, and the models, like infantry, lack any ambient shading to speak of, creating this light, depthless appearance. It's not a catastrophe, but certainly underwhelming, and above all, I wish it had consistency with those cell shaded models. Fundamentally, that's the only real issue I have here, because in the reboot's defense, the new visuals are at least clear, colorful, and easily legible at a distance. Above all, they work in service of the gameplay, and secondly, the move to a fully 3D modeled map gives players more options, more flexibility in how they view the battlefield now. Specifically, the jump to 3D allows for four levels of zoom, a game changer compared to the GBA original, which had sprites exactly measured to the screen's pixel limit. So the visuals on Switch are now able to scale. At the extremes, we get an up-close view, adding a bokeh depth of field to the cursor's periphery, and then also a distant view which nicely reveals the wooden edges of the tabletop. All of these are nice visual touches, but the zoom feature genuinely makes the game easier to navigate, especially on giant-sized maps. A complete view of the whole battlefield is now possible on Switch without any need to pan. The Advance Wars 1 and 2 reboot is still an easy one to recommend. I say that despite the uneven performance, and despite the misgivings about its visual style, and despite its Unity Engine foundation potentially working against it, this really is a lot of fun. The gameplay loop of the original remains intact, and I ended up pushing all these technical points aside in the end. 
And that's not to mention the quality of life changes. The ability to zoom in and out of the map on Switch is a big plus, obviously, but we're also now able to fast forward through spells of action with a right trigger press. My only last thought here is it's a shame there's actually no new Switch-only entry to the series announced yet. A Switch Wars, if you will. Either way, while Advance Wars Revival on Switch does lack the visual charm of the Game Boy Advance original, to its credit the game really does play just as well, if not better than ever before. But that's all from me today. If you did enjoy this analysis, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.